Welcome to Electrified. It's your host, Dylan Loomis. So first up today, we have Elon Musk set to speak at the upcoming Possible Conference, April 17th to the 19th in Miami. No word on if this will be live streamed or not. As we get closer, I will keep an eye out. This is essentially a marketing conference. And if you're in the area or willing to travel, here are the rates for different passes. And just FYI, the VIP pass for $7,200 does have a speaker meet and greet. You can find this below. On Twitter, Elon said, looking forward to it. With FSD version 11, it is now rolling out to a wider audience. First, Elon replied to Wanda Hudson, just sharing an image saying she was getting version 11.3.3. To that, Elon said, it's close. One more round of refinement needed. Holmars asked for more detail. Elon said, still a few legacy neural nets using single cam, single frame that still need to move to surround video. If you're new, this rewrite of Tesla's FSD code has been a multi-year process transitioning to using surround video. So it'll be really nice, I'm sure, for Tesla and the engineers to get to this new place in the new state of Tesla's FSD code and then being able to iterate from that new place. I'm just speculating here, but I think what Elon meant with this tweet is that before it goes to an actual wide release, they need one more round of refinement. With that said, it does seem like a much broader cohort got update 11.3.3 over the weekend. As far as I can tell, it looks like this update is mostly just bug fixes. In what I think is a new Cybertruck sighting from Gregor Truck, Quick aside, his bio had me dying this morning. Office fans will get that. But it does have the triangular side mirrors, which is a newer version. And you can see the windshield wiper, if there is one at all, it would have to be tucked under the front hood because it's not sticking out here like it usually is. Was able to spot this quick video also from Gregor Truck. Apparently this is in Palo Alto and this took place yesterday. If you zoom in and pause, you can see the scale of the Cybertruck, so smaller, but definitely not small. And one more frame for you, make of it what you will. Giga Berlin has officially hit 5,000 Model Ys per week, this taking place one year after delivering the first vehicles to customers. If you don't know, the 5,000 per week mark is Tesla's definition of volume production. So this is a major milestone and Giga Berlin has seemingly pulled away from Giga Austin a bit. The last update we got from Austin was December 15th when they hit 3,000 Model Ys per week. This was actually just three days before Giga Berlin then announced they hit 3,000 Model Ys per week. So back in December, Giga Austin was ahead of Giga Berlin. We have not gotten another update from Austin since this tweet. Check out the timeline for Giga Berlin. October 1st, they were at 2,000 Model Ys per week. Then 11 weeks later, they hit 3,000. Then another eight weeks after that, they hit 4,000. And then just four weeks after that, they now hit 5,000 Model Ys per week. This is exactly what Elon means when he says the production ramp is exponential. The initial stated capacity per annum for Giga Berlin is still 500,000. In all reality, we know it's going to be higher than that, just like they did with Shanghai. The current production rate per annum is set to be at 250,000 with this most recent update. And don't forget, with every 1,000 unit weekly increase in production, that's another $2.75 billion in annual revenue or $770 million in annual profit using 28% gross margins. Speaking of Giga Berlin, Berlinergy on Twitter shared an article talking about the upcoming expansion at the site. It needs to be noted that this 100 hectare or around 247 acre expansion to the east at Giga Berlin does require some more deforestation, so there is going to be a public feedback period that's set to start April 6th, lasting for one month. Part of this specific expansion is set to be for the freight or the train station with optimized rail and traffic routes. In addition, logistics and storage areas are planned for the expansion, as well as recreation and training space and a daycare center. So who else out there is super excited to hear how this public comment period goes? Many people were chatting about this over the weekend. The Model 3 used car prices have come down significantly since last year. It really shouldn't be a surprise though. They're coming from very high levels. 
We now have $7,500 to get a new Tesla. The price for a new Tesla has also come down significantly, so plenty of factors make this pretty obvious. Pause if you'd like, but zooming out to the entire car market, this is year over year changes in one to five year old used car prices in each month listed here. Going back to September of last year, you see the prices were up, then they were up less, then they were down, now they're down more. Here's the top 10 used cars with the biggest six month price drop. The Model 3 leads the way down 21.5% or around $11,300. Overall, I think this is awesome. It's clearly great for the consumer and Tesla's business model does not rely on their used car business. I would just add scrolling down a bit to see the national average at 31.8 thousand. The Model 3 is still $10,000 over that mark. And one clear trend, I would just add most of the used cars seeing the biggest price drops are actually in this $20,000 range. Whereas the top 10 models with the greatest six month price increase, it's actually more of a luxury segment ranging from, we'll call it above 50,000 all the way up into the six figure realm. Simply put, and generally speaking, we have this gap occurring where the luxury market is getting more luxury and the affordable market is getting more affordable in the used car space. Here's a quick video from Idra. Here we are in front of these six huge motors that are needed to open and close this 9,000 ton gigapress. It's really important for us to be able to control these motors and their pumps in the most efficient way possible. Engineerix put out a new video showcasing the new Tesla hairpin motor. We've got a treat today. This is the new fourth generation Tesla drive unit. Um, I believe it's being produced at Gigafactory Texas. And based on what I can tell, it's being used as the rear drive unit in the Model Y at this time. It obviously will uh, directly bolt into the Model 3 in the rear position. Um, and it's an evolution of the first PM SRM drive unit released in 2017 that was the rear drive unit in the Model 3. So we've got a whole new inverter design here. Um, it's much more compact. It's uh, more rectangular and less irregularly shaped. It's got a cast in place high voltage connector and data connector. Same design of the rotor here. But here's our new hairpin design stator. Very elegant. This is going to be more efficient because it's got greater infill. It's obviously much easier to manufacture because this is automated and it doesn't need all that manual banding that the fine copper wires did on the, the old design. Much more um, elegant housing. It's uh, You can tell they learned a lot from the housing. It's smoother. It's got less ribs on it, so less material. They've built in the oil filter cartridge, so it's permanent. It goes into this housing here. He did also cover the new inverter and the new control board, so this video will be linked below. And don't forget, here's one small example. Was this not new? Did you know that Tesla has its own software to monitor the drive unit to get the balance and rotation right? Sure, you can buy software to do this, but Tesla said, hey, we'll make a better one for this problem because in the long run, it's worth it. Tesla's is faster and more accurate already, and no, this was not easy to do. This allows them to iterate through millions of drive unit designs to ultimately pick the best one. In even simpler terms, Tesla vehicles are about to get more powerful and more efficient. This is a big deal, folks. A huge deal. Huge. If you'd like to learn more about Tesla's new motors, 2-Bit Da Vinci just did a very good video. It's below. The Tesla referral program is now back in Europe. Essentially, you earn credits when you refer somebody to buy a Tesla. They go into your loot box. And then from there in the app, you can actually use those credits toward things like software upgrades, supercharging, and more. There are also some boosted incentives and credits if the person you refer takes delivery before the end of Q1. One quick example, the Beschlunigungs boost, aka acceleration boost for 9,000 500 credits, which would take about five referrals. Drive Tesla Canada also reporting in the United States and Canada, if you buy a Model S or X before the end of the quarter, you can get 10,000 free supercharging kilometers in Canada or 10,000 free charging miles in the States. 
the credits are good for two years. The free supercharging credits for the S and X are worth anywhere between $1,000 to $2,000 based on geography. Elon had another right hook for Warren Buffett in response to this tweet saying he could have just invested in Tesla at a $200 million market cap when he had the opportunity to do so. With Tesla pushing up against a $600 billion market cap, that would have been a 3,000X. We got some new pictures of the Midnight Cherry Red outside in Germany. Definitely not the best pictures I've ever seen, but you can see the different shades of this red depending on how the sun is hitting it, which is pretty cool. Here's that same phenomena from the front. And one more from the other side. What do you guys think? The UAW has voted for a new leader. The old regime is out. It's about time, honestly. And going forward, it looks like this new administration, if you will, is set to be much more aggressive. The new leader is Sean Fain, who's been talking about a historic change in direction for the organization, taking that more aggressive approach with the employers AKA the automakers. Clearly the constituents have been frustrated with things like concessions, corruption, and plant closures. Fain and his team ran on the platform of no corruption, no concessions, and no tiers. Tiers being a different tiered system that after the last negotiation, some of the automakers were implementing. This year's negotiations are set to be pretty contentious, but also super important. It's not hard to see why. In the short term, this could lead to higher costs for these automakers trying to transition over to EVs. You guys know I'm not pro or anti-union. I'm just saying the more benefits that these union members get means the more that these automakers actually have to pay, which means less profits for them. Plenty of folks out there are super excited about CATL's new Chilin battery. I'm just saying I haven't seen any confirmation that Tesla is going to implement this, at least in the near term. That doesn't mean they won't. I'm just saying I haven't seen it officially. Now, yes, I'm fine with saying it's likely that Tesla will do this as CATL set up its newest battery shop just a few miles down the road from Giga Shanghai. This improved version of their LFP chemistry where the iron is replaced with magnesium, zinc, and aluminum. So MP3, the name for this new Chilin battery, is still a lithium phosphate version. In case you happen to read this article, no, there's no Model 2 being built at Shanghai. This should be a typo for Tesla's Model 3. And this stat right here is literally just being copied and pasted by a variety of reporting sources. So for me, I'm just gonna wait until we actually see these batteries officially in a Tesla vehicle, then we can talk more about it. However, it's definitely exciting because if it comes to fruition, a Model 3 standard range could see a range boost in the neighborhood of 20 to 30 miles. But will the price or anything else change? We just have to wait. Tesla just posted this on its Instagram. In case you missed it, toward the end of 2021, Turkey rebranded its country name to Turkiye, and they shared a date of April 4th. This article was from the beginning of 2022, saying that Tesla was planning on selling the entire sexy lineup in Turkiye in 2022 just a bit late. Speaking of global deliveries, Tesla Asia tweeted out 2023 Model S and X deliveries have begun in China's mainland. Honestly, I think this is a bigger deal than most are taking. This really should help boost Tesla's brand of luxury, having potentially the best electric vehicles that money can buy, the Model S and X, refreshed versions in this market, I think it will have a halo effect. Yes, I know there are much higher end electric vehicles with a lot more luxurious features. So if you wanna just say best bang for your buck, let's go with that. The retrial for Tesla's discrimination case, the one where Tesla was initially ordered to pay $137 million, but then it was dropped down to $15 million, then that wasn't accepted, so they're back to trial starting this week, supposed to last for five days. The same judge will preside over this week's trial, and both sides are barred from presenting new evidence or calling new witnesses. The EV market, and specifically Tesla's market share in Australia, is finally starting to see some growth after years of overcoming challenges. To keep it brief, the supply of EVs coming to Australia the past few years has been very low for multiple reasons. That pushed prices is higher and you pair that with the old administration that 
wasn't really a fan of electric vehicles or sustainable energy. Luckily, that administration is now gone. With that prior administration that was not making things easy gone, the new administration is rolling out some EV incentives, and now manufacturers are actually willing to ship some of their vehicles into the area. So the EV supply is increasing and prices are coming down, becoming more reasonable for more people. When it comes to Australia's top selling EVs in 2022, it's really the Model 3 and Y, and then everybody else way further down the list. Here we have Kelly Blue Book of all sources reporting that the retrofit for the round steering wheel to replace the yoke on the Model S and X is actually sold out. It does indeed take you right here saying it is indeed out of stock. However, I am being told you can still buy a new Model S or X and choose the round wheel or the yoke. This is just for the retrofit. Neuralink is seeking a clinical trials partner, which yes, is very exciting, but I would add they still have to overcome some doubts from the FDA. Neuralink has been talking to the Barrow Neurological Institute in Phoenix, Arizona, but they've also been talking to other sources and it seems like these are all very preliminary discussions. This re-rev company took Google searches for two months to then determine the most anticipated EV of the year. No surprise, Cybertruck far and away in first place. Here's the rest of the list. You can find me on Twitter at DylanLumis22. Hope you guys have a wonderful day. Please like the video if you did, and a huge thank you to all of my Patreon supporters.